All right. Modeling techniques in the family editor. So we have this uh, generic uh, furniture template open from the R uh, RVT template directory because we're going to be creating a new family, a bunch of them. So now, creating complex geometry is not always as easy as opening the family editor and starting to model the shape that you think you're trying to create. Sometimes you need to model one form in order to create another form. And sometimes you need to model a complex parametrized negative form to control a solid shape that you are trying to create. So that you understand these advanced techniques, we will first cover the available geometry types that can be created in Revit. There are five discrete geometry types in the family editor. Extrusion, blend, revolve, sweep, and swept blend. Both solid and void forms can be modeled from these shapes. In this section, you learn how to create all of these types along with the family edited technique of nesting families. So real quick, uh, we're going to get into uh, each of these. So we're going to start with solid extrusion. Create a 3D solid by extruding a 2D shape profile. And the video is loading. When you sketch a 2D shape, it is used as the basis for a 3D shape extruded between a start point and an end point. Which type of these tools you select is important, but our advice is to use the simplest form that will express what you are trying to model. Keep in mind how the geometry is likely to change. Creating an extrusion. Let's get back to the furniture exercise where we are constructing a table. Activate the reference level floor plan and from the create panel in the ribbon, Click Extrusion. We're in the reference level, creating extrusion within the context of invoking the tool. A contextual toolbar opened up. You can tell by the uh, aquamarine, teal, uh, blue, sky blue, colored toolbar ribbon that opens up. And as you can see, we have depth, we have offset, and in the properties palette, we're preparing to create an extrusion. And it's defaulted solid. It has uh, visibility graphic overrides um, that we can set just like we discussed prior. Um, we can have it set different detail levels. So just keep that in the back burner. Activate the reference level. From the create panel ribbon, click extrusion. The first action we'll take is to specify a work plane to host the extrusion. If you do not specify a work plane, the default plane will be the level associated with the current view. In the work plane panel, in the contextual tab of the ribbon, click set. It specifies the work plane for the current view or for a selected work plane based element. When sketching, you can snap to the work plane grid, but you cannot align or dimension to it. Set a named reference plane as the work plane. In the work plane panel, in the contextual tab of the ribbon, click set. In the name drop down list, within the work plane dialog box, choose reference plane top as shown here. Name, reference plane, center front back, center left right, reference plane top. Well, it only has a reference level. So, it doesn't differentiate between the top and this family. In the options bar, set the depth to negative two inches, or negative 50 millimeters. This will allow the top of the extrusion to be aligned with the top reference plane with its thickness extruding downward, away from the work plane. In the Properties palette, set Subcategory to Tables. And we had Hidden Lines, Overhead Lines, Tables. And if we looked at the Set Family Category and Parameters, oops, if we looked at that. You 
can see that um, it's going according to the steps. If we follow these steps, um, we'll be able to get this thing to display the way we want. And that's inclusive of me doing it. All right, so in the properties palettes at the subcategory of tables, I just wanted to show you that there's hidden lines and overhead lines uh, as the only two subcategories by default. Um, I just want to take a look at something. All right, because we haven't created any other subcategories. And there's also a tables subcategory, which was in this template. All right, so um, for the material parameter, click the small button to the right of the parameter value field. For the material, small button to the family parameter field. This button will allow you to associate a family parameter to the property instead of simply choosing one material to be assigned to the solid. Right, because that would be at the, uh, the object level. So this is going to be at the family uh, level. So if we do a create a new uh, parameter, being that it's material, it's going to default to material and group this parameter under material. Uh, click the add parameter button and create a new parameter named tabletop material. Tabletop material. Click OK to close both open dialog boxes and then you will see that the material field is now inactive and the small button has an equal sign label. Material by category. This means that the property is now being controlled by a family parameter. Well, good, because we're creating a family. We're not in, a, in the project mode, right? We're creating a, an RFA, not an RVT. We're creating an RFA from an RV, an RFA, rather family template, to load into an RVT project. RFA, RFT, RVT. And that's going to be a perplexing for some of you. Needed file formats. In the draw panel, choose the rectangle tool. Well, I didn't get a chance to do that. I hear it. When I hit that, I must have jumped ahead of a step. Hold on. Create an extrusion, right? Oh, there it is. Sorry. Uh, create a simple rectangle. Sketch a rectangle snaps to the intersections of the outer reference planes. Well, let's see it. Snaps to the outer edge of the reference planes. Said we couldn't snap to it. Um, of the outer reference planes. Left, front, right, and back. Okay, outer reference plane. Left, front, right, and back. Well, that doesn't, in the reference level, I don't get that option. That snaps to the intersections of the outer reference planes, left, front, right, and back. Okay, well, left, front, right, and back. Well, that's, that's over here. That would be... Left, left, front, right, and back. Okay, well, I'll drag it over, get it where I want, and modify it. It won't snap to those reference planes. Uh, okay, well, that kind of uh, puts me dead in the water. can't snap to it right this second, so hold on a second. Let me, uh, let me cancel out of here for a second. Yes, I want to discard the extrusion. I want to create an extrusion, I want to set a plane, reference level, top, show create a rectangle that snaps to the 
Well, if that's the case, then I'm going to have to draw in reference lines, right? I'm going to have to draw in reference lines in order to do that. In order to get that to snap. So let me put in some reference lines. Ah, your sister. Okay, well, we have uh, these, uh, I can trim these. Snap the reference lines for some godforsaken reason, so I'm not gonna argue with it. Oops, let's use the trim command, the multiple trim. All right, so now if I wanted to uh, snap to these, I could uh, just do it like this so we don't confuse ourselves. So we have the original reference uh, planes, and we have this, this new reference uh, plane set, so that I can create an extrusion that goes from the left, front, right, and back. Oops, rectangle. From the left back to the right front. That snaps to the intersections of the outer reference planes. Well, How you do it is uh, purely up to you. Immediately after your second click to complete the sketch, you will see padlock icons at each of the four sides of the sketch. Click each one to establish an alignment constraint with the respective reference plane. Well, there aren't any reference planes over here, but hopefully that'll be uh, sufficient. Um, um, the end of this line, end of this line. We're going to see. We'll see if this works. Or if I have to draw in reference lines that weren't drawn in. Uh, if you click away from the constraint icon, the icons disappear and you will either have to delete and redraw the sketch lines or use the align tool to reestablish the constraint. Now see, in the, uh, in this model family, there are reference lines to the left, to the right, and to the back and the front. We didn't have that luxury. Uh, we have to we have to draw them in. We have to draw them in. So that's going to uh, just be a real pain in the butt. So I'll just kill this for a second. I'm going to extrude this. Uh, delete that. Create reference line from here to here. From here to here. From here to here. From here to here. Delete this one. This one. Um, well, I actually, it's it's a little, it's a little more than that. I don't want reference lines. Heavy reference planes. So create reference plane. Left. Right. Front. So now we have all these reference points. Let's try it again. Create, extrusion, snap to the front, the left back, right front, lock them in place. This is how we're going to flex the geometry. There has to be a reference point there. Click Finish Edit Mode from the Contextual tab and Ribbon, and you will see the first solid pizza of your exercise family. Remember, this depth was negative 2 inches. 
right? And we had a material that we added a parameter to it that was table material, tabletop material, tabletop material uh, type parameter, and we controlled by uh, the, the material we controlled by by category. All right, so now um, we have that property in there being controlled by the family parameter. Um, click to finish edit mode. So we have our uh, little, as you can see it here, an elevation. It's extruded in the negative uh, Z direction, two inches. Activate the front elevation view and add an aligned dimension from the top reference plane to the bottom of the table extrusion. So annotate aligned from the top to the bottom. And you can drag this little two out here like that with a little uh, leader line on it if you want. Select the dimension and from the label drop down list in the options bar choose, choose add parameter. Name the new parameter tabletop thickness and click OK. And we went through this. So um, when you grab a dimension, you can get a dimensional constraint, a dimensional parameter. Create parameter. Opens up the global parameter dialog box and create a new one called tabletop thickness. Tabletop thickness. And then click OK. Open the family types dialog box again and set the name drop down list to type 2 in the tabletop material uh, model or uh, tabletop material parameter. Open the family types dialog box again. Family types a dialog box again. And set the name drop down list to type 2. Well, I don't see the name top down. Uh, I don't see it. Type name. We can create a new type. Type two in the tabletop uh, uh, material parameter. Click the ellipsis button. We have to create a new type. New parameter. Add a parameter. No. We have to create a new type. New type. Type two. It doesn't say that. It's, it wants us to use the cumulative education that we found from prior exercises. I, I believe it tricks you up a little bit. So, um, yeah, we got a, now we have a type 2 and um, in the tabletop material parameter, tabletop material parameter, click the ellipsis button, which is, you have to select the box. So launch the material browser. From the material browser, make sure the library panel, panel is displayed by clicking the icon at the top of the document materials. list. The library is selected. You can see it right here, right? That's the library. All the materials loaded into this family template. Not much. Make sure the library panel is displayed by clicking the icon at the top of the document materials list. Search for oak at the top. I don't see oak at all. But then again, we're going to find out. Uh, oak is the top of the dialog box. I don't see oak. Um, I don't see any of it. I don't see oak. We have to create new material. Well, do I have everything open? Open existing library. Create a new material. Uh, it's always something, right? Um, I actually have oak um, as a image, as a JPEG image, but I wasn't prepared to create a new material right now. an assumption that that we have this material so what I could do is let's see what's the fastest way to do this 
I have an idea. Let's see here. If I transfer it, open material, open desk project. Um, let me see something. has the material I want. I'm just going to transfer all the materials from one project to another, so I don't have to create a new material and then set the resolution, set the cut, uh, visibility, and all that stuff. Just give me a second. It, it likes to trip, trip you up along the way. So I'll go to, back, to, back to the reference level, manage, transfer projects standards from visualization. I only want the materials. Check none. Check materials, hit OK. Um, new only. Let's see if I get a little more of a selection. Open this family types dialog box. Create a new type 2. OK. From the tabletop material ellipsis box, ah, we've got a much better selection. Type in oak. Like, uh, of course there's no oak. Of course there's not. So I'm just going to type in wood and see what kind of wood we got. Birch, cherry, dimensional lumber, wood flooring, wood furring, wood veneers. It's getting a wood veneer. It's Ikea furniture. We're not uh, that gothic cabinet craft. Okay, so... Uh, select Oak from the library panel. Click the up arrow icon to load the material from the library into the family. In the graphics tab of the material browser, check the box Use Render Appearance. Well, that's what it should look like on a, uh, a wall. And this would look like what it looks like on a surface. It's a cube. Alright, so use render appearance and then click OK. Adding material from the library and setting its graphic appearance. Well, let's see if I did that right. Show library panel. Show library panel. Well, that's the library panel. That's all of it, right? So we had it open the whole time, but there was just not many materials in that RFA, uh, RFT, Rebel Family Temple, that we used to create the family. All right, so, again, going off a little bit, a little speed bump here and there. Um, so, select the tabletop thickness, value to four inches, and then click Apply in the Family Types dialog box. Repeat steps 8, 9, and 10 for type 1, but search for glass and load the material named glass green. Set the tabletop thickness typed for type 1 to 1 inch, and then click OK. So uh, go, let's see here. Type 1, create type type 1. That's just going backwards. Type 1, OK. Thickness is 1 inch. And glass green. Let's see if I can find it. Glass. Which one is this one? Um, Make this a little bigger so I can read it. Zoning. Glass fiber reinforced. Glass gray. Glass um, white high luminance. Glass curtain wall glazing. And of course there isn't glass green. Glass block, glass, glass clear gray. Of course there's not. It must be in another file. Glass green, I don't see it in here. No. When glass loaded into this material library is uh all the ones you see. So this one's getting white illuminance. Let's see how that one works. Use render appearance. 
Hit apply. Hit OK. Hit apply. Hit OK. All right, let's see what that does for us. Well, um, it kind of takes us on a tangent a little bit. Because now it wants us to create a sweep. So we've created this extrusion, right? We have this extrusion. And um, see, it's type two, right? There's a uh, material, glass, high, uh, high visibility, high, oh, high white. So now, there are two types, right? Let's double check. Type 1 and type 2. Okay, let's double check. Now, creating a sweep. Let's have a little fun and assign a void sweep to the edge of the tabletop. It will be unique because we only want the sweep to cut the tabletop when type 2 is selected. It will not cut the top for type 1. A sweep is a 2D profile that follows a path. The magic behind sweeps in the family editor is that a sweep path can be set automatically, set to automatically follow other model geometry. A great example is the continuous tubular structure of the chair shown, and it's 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 pretty uh, involved. Um, as you can see in the sequence of images, a simple solid form is generated. A path is generated along the edges of the void geometry. A tube profile is applied to the path, and the solid shape is made invisible. To explore how this film is made, download the C15 two, uh, C15 two chairs RVT from the book's webpage. Let's just take a look at it real quick because it's actually pretty cool. Two chairs, and you've seen these before. Um, tube chairs, where is it? Right here. This is actually really cool. And you'll see it has a void shape in there. And it was created from uh, Cross geom uh, simple geometric primitives. So let me just go to, uh, is there a 3D view here? 3D view one. Right, you see, right here, these families, they were created with a, by revolving uh, this solid around uh, a geometric shape. Um, and we're gonna do similar, so the same thing, except we're gonna subtract it out of the edge of the desk give the edge a chamfer, or a fillet, if you will. So let me just close out of that, go back to our family, and um, we're gonna create a void sweep. So in this part of the chapter exercise, you will create a void sweep along the outer edge of the tabletop using the pick path tool. You will then assign a parameter to drive the void into or away from the solid extrusion, depending on which type is specified. Activate the default 3D view, which I have, and set the graphic style in the control bar to sheet it. Open the family types dialog box and select type 2 in the name drop down list. Ah, oh, the glass doesn't render. <clears throat> Alright, um, you know what, for uh, clarity purposes, I wanna, I'm gonna just do this because um, I'm not getting what I want from type uh, this texture. I want some other, uh, I want tablecloth. Use render appearance, let's see if that gives us something that can differentiate between the two a little more clear. And that's gray. Maybe it's render appearance will be different. Yeah, it's a little bit different. So I could tell uh, tablecloth. All right, so um, type, make sure type two is the one we're working on, type two. Okay, wood veneer, cancel. Uh, type two, and then load the profile family. C15 table void profile that accompanied the exercise file. So if we were to uh, load the profile family, so we're going to insert, load it to project, close this. Go back over here. Go into the load family. Go into profiles. Or is it in chapter 15? No, it's in the download from the book's companion website. 
Instant Chapter 15 in that profile that we're going to void out. So we're in Family Editor. Uh, let's see here. And Table Void Profile. All right. Table Void Profile that accompanied the exercise file. So let's load that. And all this is a profile, as you can see. It's just a profile. From the Create tab, now it's loaded in. From the Create tab, choose Void Forms, Void Sweep. From the Contextual tab in the ribbon, click Pick Path. In the 3D view, pick each of the four upper edges of the tabletop solid. One, two, did I get it? Yeah, it turns pink. Three, four. And as you see, the first pick placed the insertion point of the profile right here at the corner of the top edge, in the middle of it. Um, all right, so click Finish Edit Mode, the green check mark, in the contextual tab of the ribbon to complete the Pick Path command. Now we've picked a path, right? We've picked a path, but we haven't um, selected the profile. In the Sweep panel, of the contextual tab, set the profile drop down list to C15 table void profile. As you can see, we loaded it, and there it is. So as you can see, it loaded in. If I unload it, you'll see by looking at the view, it's not in, now it's in. Like I said, it's like we're gonna whittle. Except that I don't like the way, um, if you look at this from the front, that's gonna give this, I, I believe this should be uh, mirror it in, right? Uh, uh, we're going to find out. I'm not 100 sure that's going to give us what the profile we want. We want this side to cut this way, right? Is that how it wants us to do it? Let's see. Um, we got the C15 table void profile. Zoom into the area, the area where the profile is applied to the pad and make sure the curved part of the profile is facing toward the tabletop solid. If it is not, click the flip button in the options bar. Well, as you can see, flip button in the options bar. See, <laughs> it's intuitive. It even can teach someone as dense as me. So again, it knows, it knows. Uh, all right, so we flipped it. Click finish edit mode in the contextual tab in the ribbon and avoid will automatically cut the tabletop solid. Let's see. Okay. Well, it sure did. And it's still there. You can actually select it. It's a, it's a table void. A furniture void. In the furniture category. So again, this is how you can start to really, um, you know, sculpt the uh, geometry that you want with these uh, with these tools. When you create a void in the family editor, it, it will automatically cut any existing solids. If you do not want a void to automatically cut other geometry, you can create the elements as solids first. When you are satisfied with the forms, select the appropriate solids and change them to voids in the properties palette. Note that once a solid or a void is being cut by another object, you cannot change the solid void property, right? So, as I, right now, it's uh, a void, and there's nothing I can do about it. But if I was to go back a couple of steps before I finished it, right? Uh, and so let's see if I can pick a path. One, oh my God, let's see here, mode. Let's see here, uh, profile. Anyway, yeah, so once it cuts, you can't change it back. Let me uh, cancel out of here. Everything was fine. So I decided to test the theory, hold on. Of course, I have to do it again because I cancel it out. So that's not a problem. All right, so you saw that it, it, it does indeed cut the geometry. And again, it was as simple as going create, avoid form, avoid sweep, 
Um, you don't have the profile loaded yet, right? Pick path. Or we could have we could have drawn a path, right? Um, set, hit yes, and then profile. Modify sweep by sketch or by C table void. And there it is. Now here here's where here's where I believe we can um, we can make some some changes here. So if I was to hit before it cuts it, before it cuts it, well, we have to flip it first in the options bar. And let's see if I could let it cut it. Yes, yeah, see, once it cuts, you can't change it uh, to a uh, void form. And again, a solid form. This is where um, it's either going to be a, a void form or it's going to be uh, a swept, a blend, solid, same tool. It's the same tool. One's solid, one's a void. Um, and I've, I've done it in the past where um, if I was to create another one, let's just say I was to uh, pick a path and then just pick the edges of this table again. And then I was to hit OK. More than one curve not allowed, OK. What if I went to the bottom of it, pick 3D edges and then pick down here on the bottom select these edges don't select that edge don't select this edge don't select this edge because you already stuck. Let me see if I can sweep something on the bottom here. All right, so now I want to, uh, more than one loop not allowed, because right? I already swept something there. So quick path. Right, I'm not going to be a dead horse. We, we got what we wanted to get in the exercise. I just wanted to demonstrate that you can still change something from a void to a solid in a properties panel only if it doesn't already cut something. So uh, I guess I could, I could maybe do an extrusion and I can just do a quick rectangle and we do it here on this work plane. You know. See now, right here, as it's selected, a solid or a void, that's what I meant to do. Um, and it hasn't cut anything yet. It hasn't cut anything. So right now, it's a void. Now, I could, I believe, cut this geometry out. Select solid geometry to be cut on the table. Select void geometry to cut selected solid. Well, as you can see, now we have a hole in the table. All right, now that uh, click, click finish edit mode in the contextual tab and the void will automatically cut the tabletop solid. Uh, all right, so now that, uh, just, so, just to show you, now that this cut, this furniture void that I'm selecting, I can't change it back to a solid anymore once it does the cut, right? Once it does the cut. So uh, that's uh, just something you should make a note of. When you create a void in the family editor, it'll automatically cut any existing solid. If you do not want a void to automatically cut other geometry, you can create the elements as solids first. When you are satisfied with the forms, select the appropriate solids and change them to voids in the properties palette. Note that once a solid or a void is being cut by another object, you cannot change the solid slash void property. You must use the uncut geometry tool first. Okay, well we can uncut that, right? Uncut geometry. So, pick, uh, look at the status bar. First, pick select solid geometry to stop being cut or avoid geometry to stop cutting. So you use the option to go in both ways. Now, select what you don't, the, the cutter. And that's the cutter. Now, when I select it, I can change it back to a solid. Right? And now it's, uh, now it's a dividing 
line on a table in a library that's compliant with the COVID-19 epidemic. So we could change this into a, uh, a glass divider, right? And a countertop, if we wanted to. So now we have this glass divider. I should have left it glass, right? Material, huh? By category. All right, so now, we ain't done yet. We were able to accomplish that. Let's get this out of the way. Because you use the pick path method, right? Because we used the pick path method to define the sweep path, the sweep will automatically update as the shape of the tabletop changes. This exercise is a simple example of a powerful tool with a plethora of applications. Now that we have created a void that cuts the solid geometry of the wood tabletop type, you need to adjust it so that the profile does not cut the solid when the glass tabletop type is selected, is specified. Unfortunately, you cannot simply turn the void sweep on and off, but you can adjust its horizontal offset so it cuts like a virtual sliding saw. Let's read that again. Because you use the pick path method to find the sweep path, the sweep will automatically update as the shape of the tabletop changes. This exercise is a simple example of a powerful tool with a plethora of applications. Now that you've created a void that cuts the solid geometry of the wood tabletop type, you need to adjust it so that the profile does not cut the solid when the glass tabletop type is specified. Unfortunately, you cannot simply turn the void sweep on or off, but you can adjust its a horizontal offset so it cuts like a virtual sliding saw. In the 3D view, select a void sweep. In a 3D view, select a void sweep. I got it. All right, so it's selected. In the properties palette, you will see the parameter that parameters that drive the profile within the sweep. Click the associate family parameter button next to the horizontal profile offset value. Horizontal profile offset. Click the Add Parameter button. Create a new parameter called Trigger Cut. Trigger. Okay. We need to put Trigger Cut. And then click OK to close both dialog boxes. Open the Family Types dialog box. And for type two, set the trigger cut value to zero inches and then click apply. Trigger cut, it's already set. Switch to type one and set the trigger cut value to negative four inches. And then click OK. Close the dialog box. Figure 1536 shows the differences between the two types just upon it. Okay, well, if I was to then go here, we could see that this one isn't cut because the trigger offset this out, right? It offset it out. Let's go back to the table itself. change this hold on a second I want to uh, dissect this a little bit all right that's type one it's type two it moves the uh, it moved the trigger away from the top of the top of the table, right? It moved the trigger out. The tr when you had trigger on, it applied the trigger to the uh, constraints, right? Because this is constraints to the reference points. 
So it applied the trigger to the constraints. Okay, well that's, uh, that's one way of doing it. Um, unfortunately, you cannot simply turn this void sweep on and off. Uh, well, it's just the way the program is programmed. All right, so adding tool tips. There are probably been times when you have pulled the family out of your library or a previous project to add to your model, and you can't remember what the parameters actually control. Parameters like height or length are pretty easy, but will you remember what the trigger cut does? In the family editor, you can add tool tips to your parameters. You can add the 250 characters to describe your parameter and add some additional notes to how it is intended to be used. In the parameters properties dialog box, you will see the edit tool tip button. Family editor, you can add tooltips to your parameters, but you will really remember what it does. All right, so let me go back to those parameters. Hold on, can't slide here. Go back to here. No, that's not where I want it to be. Uh, trigger cut right here. And type two. I want to edit this parameter. One second, one second. Uh, -da -da, -da -da. I want to create a new. Oh, I want to create it. Is it already in here? So, no, I want to create a new one. I want to look at the uh, parameters for this one. It's the only place I could see it. Tip button. Clicking this button will allow you to add a message or description to your parameter to help explain its functionality. It triggers the color of the solid geometry by the void. It triggers the cut of the solid, oops, solid geometry by the void. Okay, well, when we, when we hover over it, we'll have it. Hovering the mouse over the parameter and the parameter's property dialog box will show the tooltip you have created. Hovering over it in the parameter properties dialog box triggers the cut of solid geometry by the void. All right, so we had some speed bumps. All right, before we get into, uh, we're, almost, we're almost there. You will see that adding the negative value to the horizontal profile offset allows you to control whether the void cuts the solid tabletop. We simply assign the offset value to each family type, but you could explore methods of using formulas with logic such as this. If tabletop thickness is less than four inches, then trigger cut equals negative four inches, else trigger cut equals zero. The actual syntax of this formula to be applied in the family types dialog box would be as follows. So if I was to go and edit this parameter, it's now giving me an issue here. Trigger cut. I could have given this a formula. Um, a formula instead of a uh, 
just a, a dimension parameter. And there's a syntax to it. So, let me see something. Now I don't want to mess this up. I don't want to mess this up. I'm going to show you the syntax. Well, here's the formula. The syntax would be, it's an if statement. It's an if statement. Table top thickness is less than four inches, comma, negative zero feet, four inches, comma, zero feet, on parenthesis. If tabletop thickness is less than four inches, then trigger cut equals negative four inches, else trigger cut equals zero. So that's the actual, uh, the syntax uh, for this trigger cut. So, um, it may cause an error because we, we uh, put in two, two parameters, but it still is cut. So, as you can see, you can manipulate it based on a formula, uh, just like uh, you can uh, in Excel, uh, if statements are something you might want to research. Uh, anyway, so we need to creating a revolve and then creating a, a blend and a sweat blend. And again, we're on page 667. That's a lot to comprehend and have to deploy and practice and just, you know, produce in the field. But if you know where to look for the, uh, the answers to your questions, or if you know how to structure your questions and your queries accordingly, we will find uh, server-based hosting and hosting these projects hosting these elements into entities within the project will be a little easier. So you, you'll know where to find your answers. And that's, that was a secret to, to how I learned uh, some of the software platforms I learned in the past. I uh, just uh, structured my questions to give me the return uh, answer that I wanted and not something that was convoluted. And searching for answers um, it takes a lot of time, but again, you get a lot of data returned that isn't applicable. So you're going to have to discern which information is the correct information because there's a plethora of information out there about building information modeling. I'm just one uh, portal of that. So hopefully um, you subscribe to my line of reason. I know um, I'm a little weathered in the snap. It only comes from... a uh, years of trial and error. And they say that uh, success is 99% perspiration and 1% inspiration. Quiz, who said that? <laughs>